Billy Reeves with Paul Draper. Let's open the box to be precise. The Manson box set closed for business. Before we hear from Paul, this is Tax Loss live at Brixton. Third of October 1998 tax loss now Paul you have the closed for business box set in your lap right now let's open it up what are your overriding emotions what's it like what's in it what do I get for my dough wow it's heavier than I thought the box is um, massive and it weighs a ton it's absolutely amazingly made actually the first thing getting the book out Oh wow, there's my handwritten lyrics and piles of other stuff. Art prints, a book, another book. Wow, and 25, 24 CDs and the Brixton DVD. So it's Peter Doggett who writes the uh, the book, loads of unseen photographs and all, and a whole story of the band. Loads of my extracts out of my notebooks. Um, God, that's mad. Egg-shaped Fred, my original lyrics in a book. But um, some of the dirt, the real story of the band in there. And then at the back, you've got this amazing gear section where they track down all our instruments. It's like I've only ever seen the Beatles do that. 
and then interviews with all the gear we used in the studio and then all the interviews with the people we work with and etc etc and then you oh on the back that's my original handwriting of where we come up with the name of the band and then you get my signed close of business lyrics that's a signed 2000 then and then various art prints and then you come to an, another book of all the official fanzines I put them into a book and then you got another book which is all studio um, like my lyrics from the studio and then in this amazingly packaged thing you have 25 discs with pretty much every track we ever recorded and loads of outtakes, new outtakes that no one's ever heard before and a DVD of the only time we were ever filmed doing a full concert which was at Brixton Academy that is quite impressive, wow Taking sweets from children's hands We made me tearing But the trains were running on time The trains were running on time We had the regrets For taking sweets from children's hands We made me tearing But the trains were running Taking sweets from children's hands We may deteriorate But the trains are around And time the trains will not be late Have a regret But taking sweets from children's hands We may deteriorate But the trains are around And time the trains will not be late Taking sweets from children's hands We may be tears But the trains are running And time the trains will not be late The Trains Run On Time from the six sessions and that's on one of five CDs dedicated to B-sides and extras and The Greatest Pain at Piano Take, that's from the four CD demos section of the box. Now I understand that at the end of many a day's recording the band would do a take which would often then be sent to fans. One fan collated them, that collection is on the box as demos one and two. 
and then the box set was extended out to three and four and they're the ones that have never been heard can you take me through the process for finding and selecting these demos and rarities uh, basically going to emi's tape store in west london and and digging right through um multi-track tapes and and converting them to digital marveling at things i'd forgotten we'd ever even recorded and putting them on that i'm selecting the ones we wanted to put out there really and putting them all on the cds and also we got some fans to send us in some really uh rare things unfinished tracks and alternative versions and um early versions of tracks that um after we'd done every album we'd just send fans out little tape cassettes in in jiffy bags and so they've all been sent not all sent back to us but some of them have been sent back to us so and people have never heard them before so it was a massive process of like going back through history and finding all this stuff that you'd completely forgotten about
You heard the impending collapse of it all, the demo version, the demo version of Closed for Business, and that one, Grey Lantern Alternative Studio version, Take Two. And uh, Grey Lantern Alternative Take Two has been getting plenty of airplay on BBC Six Music recently as a nice precursor to the box set going on pre-sale. Now, the books, we've mentioned the main one with the story from uh, Peter Doggett and all of the archive material in that. Plus, of course, there's a second one featuring archive material from the three Manson fanzines and a significant section dedicated to the equipment the band used which I understand was collected. Have those instruments been saved? Tell me about the Manson Museum. So when the ba- when uh, there was the f- second Manson convention, I think it was, which was after the band had split up, um, which was in the live rooms, I think, in Chester, the um, loads of the fans who'd came had collected a lot of the band's equipment over the years, and they put the whole thing together in, like... A massive museum of all our instruments so that's how we got in contact with people who had all the gear the band used after it had all dissipated to all four corners of the globe and um, that's how we got back in touch with all the people and they um, Scott at K-Scope um, contacted them all and uh, went round the country and fo- photographed everything and collected it all together and put it in this book which was a humongous task to get it um, historically accurate and I think it pretty much is
you heard the demo of Superstar. I've seen the top of the mountain. And Legacy, the radio edit, the classic single, which is one of the tracks, which is part of the sampler for streaming platforms. And I want to take you back, Paul, to the Glasgow Barrowlands performance of The Edge. It's the only time you ever played it live. Is that right? We did do it. on. I think we played it most nights on that tour, but that was the only tour that we ever played that song on. That's great that song we should have done more with it than just have it as a b-side but it was good live as well Edge live at Glasgow Barrowlands on the 25th of May 1997. At Margate, from Glasgow to Margate, why was the concert from Margate recorded? It was Grant G, who'd worked with Depeche Mode, who filmed it on four cameras from, on tape. And um, it's been lost when we went to the um, EMI tape storage. We could never find it, and we've we've been looking for that tape which is completely lost somewhere but we're guessing that I mean we did literally search from Los Angeles to Tokyo to try and find it and if it's we're guessing that it's out there somewhere Crash. 
audio from Margate. 24th of January 1999, wide open space and television live at the Margate Winter Gardens. The Glastonbury, V Festival and so on. Manson always suited the big stage, I think. What are your memories of the big festivals? Different from club gigs, uh, liquid mud and so forth? Um, yeah, we played Glastonbury main stage and sort of headlined the second stage. And we did, the, although all our equipment failed, we had to go off. We did the V Festivals and stuff like that. And uh, you you'd always have a huge crowd you know 80,000 or something like that and um yeah we could we could pull it off on those big stages um they just sort of bleed into one really just just like reading oh, i can remember doing the tent in reading that was good a couple of times we did that headlined it and that was you know just rammed outside you know people just for miles outside of the tent they had all the awnings up and then you go on the big stages and they're just huge, you know, you're just doing like the BBC One festivals and stuff and it, you were just, you'd come on stage and it's just a, you know, you were shocked at just how many people were there. And then obviously when we started out doing all this, as soon as we'd had like got on the radio and got an NME, like the little club gig, you know, like 200 capacity was just rammed full of people just sweating and just stage diving and all like that but they're, I mean they're two, they're two different things and then in the middle of the band we do huge theatres you know two three four thousand places and that's my main memory really just a never ending sea of theatres and then interspersed with these little gigs and massive festivals On the main stage performance at Glastonbury in 1998, Stripper Vicar. Now there's 24 CDs, as we've mentioned, all the albums, all the B-sides, all the rare stuff, all the demos, the alternative takes, the radio sessions, of course, for the BBC and others. But there's also, of course, a DVD. We've mentioned it already, the Brixton Academy gig at the beginning, and that's what we'll end with, the legendary Brixton Academy gig. The first time we filmed a proper show was the legendary lost margate film but i wanted to film brixton academy so we did that really as a backup just in case we have a lost margate and we did so um that's the only footage that the the only full concert video of us playing um we didn't think anything major was happening because we already had a you know number one album and toured all over the world so it didn't, it didn't feel like it, it just captured exactly how we were at that point, really. Um, there was a bootleg out of it years ago, um, but this is completely new footage that had just been sitting in EMI's vaults for years and was I never, ever thought it'd see the light of day. It was just um, that's exactly what we did every night. And... Um, yeah, we've got the boot the bootleg video. We've edited a few bits into it. Um, I think Andy Leith, who who um, directed and edited the film, has done an amazing job. Really, it it it, uh, it really captures who and what we were on that sixth tour. It's the only time you'll ever see us. I remember we did all had a big argument before the gig, and so um, we weren't exactly speaking. But that wasn't anything new there. <laughs> My well, thanks to Paul Draper, Manson, closed for business, out on the 11th of December. This is Being a Girl from Brixton. Being a boss, I suck it out.
Well, be